Okay, welcome. So this is Micro One uh, for 924 2020. And uh, I'm going to cover the lab that we're doing uh, tomorrow. And um, so that lab is lab four, and it's the, our first lab in C. And so as a result, uh, you are going to have to make the transition from assembly language to C, uh, which hopefully uh, won't be too challenging for you because I, uh, you've, you have at least taken a C course. Um, although uh, it, it may be challenging uh, just because uh, I know uh, some of the C courses uh, uh, aren't so good, although uh, we are trying to work on that in the department. And now we have uh, Bob Apollon uh, teaching. And hopefully, uh, for those of you that took Bob's course, you know a lot more. <laughs> okay, well, anyway. Um, so uh, so I want to talk about that lab, and I also want to talk a little bit about, uh, we'll, do, uh, we'll do a little demo along with that. I'll try and demo that lab. So I think that's just how we'll, how we'll do this video for starters. Uh, the other part of this video was a little bit of a review of C. Uh, I will do that. I may... I may delay that for a little bit later um, or maybe I'll work on that some we'll see but anyway first things first so we're gonna we're gonna switch to C so I think what I'm gonna do first I'm gonna pull up the data sheet we'll take a look at that uh, I'm gonna shrink myself down here and yeah that's good perfect and then we'll put me right there for now and then I'm gonna bring up the uh, going to bring up uh, so here here we are in the blackboard in our in the pick lab files and uh, so this is lab four and this is the instruction sheet so we'll click on it we'll bring it up uh, I'm actually going to bring it up in Adobe uh, it's a little better so and I'll switch that over here now there there we go and yeah okay I had it in edit mode so it's closed okay so, so you're going to need your, your Viva board, your Snap programmer, uh, and some way to power it, your 9-volt battery. Uh, that's all you'll need for this lab. Um, this may be the last lab. Oh, well, I think the Touch lab, you don't need any additional stuff. Anyway, so this lab is basically, it's a culmination of our LED blinking labs. So we'll still use the LEDs to help us with some of our other labs because uh, they're still good, 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 Good output uh, devices, so we can see what the what the software is doing. They can also help us to, uh, in some cases, uh, they can help us actually debug our code. So that can be that can be useful. Uh, but um, and maybe I'll move this up here. But for the most part, uh, we're not going to do any labs that just have as their intended purpose blinking the LED. Uh, this will be the last one. And this one is going to be very similar to the last lab. It's going to really kind of review what you learned in labs one through three. And this is really a great introduction, and I really encourage you to read through this. So do remember that your C code gets compiled to assembly, and then it gets loaded, uh, well, it gets assembled into machine code, and then the machine code's actually what's flashed into your, uh, in, into the flash memory of your VivaBoard chip. Um, okay, so... Uh, so, so basically, uh, you're going to fire up MP Lab X, and uh, and we're going to create a new project. Only this time, uh, when we get to the language, we're going to select uh, C. So other, otherwise, the steps are exactly the same. Uh, microchip embedded, standalone. Next, uh, pick 16F1829. Next, no header. Next, and then finally, uh, your snap. Next. And then in this, we're going to select, uh, you can use whatever the current version is you can use. I, I, my suggestion is that you go back and get version 1.45 because uh, some, of the newer, some of the newer X8 versions, 2.0 and beyond, uh, 2.00 and beyond, do cause some problems. Uh, but, uh, and I don't know that they have any great advances that uh, make all that much difference. But uh, but you're certainly uh, but they will work. But you'll you'll just find there are some little glitches, especially if you have older code. So because I still run some of the older code, I I have not upgraded. Uh, 
all of my, uh, I, I still have the, I have the compiler loaded, but I usually use 1.45 for most things. Okay, so anyway, uh, so, and you, but here you do select on XC8, so that's your C compiler. And then uh, you give your uh, project a name. And uh, by the way, just so you know, this this ISO here, this is the uh, this is the the the, the translation. Uh, uh, this is the the basically the language that you're using, and this is just for American English. Um, and then you hit finish. All right. So uh, now. So let me, so then we'll go into the program. Let me, let me switch to the program and I'll walk you through that. So I'll close these things and I'll bring up MP Lab X. Let's see, I have it up here, right there. Okay, so, so let's walk through those steps. I'll just do them again. I'll create my own project here. All right, so new project, uh, microchip enabled, standalone. I, I have loaded in the 32 bit stuff, so I have Harmony also as an option up there, which I did not select. Um, and then I'm here, I'm going to put in PIC uh, 16F1829. Um, and then that should do it. I'm not going to have a header. We talked about that before. Uh, and I'm going to, I'll, I'll use the, here's the snap. Uh, I'll use the snap, why not? Uh, so we'll do the snap. And then uh, I'm going to do XC8 1.45. Uh, and I'll call this um, lab lab uh, four uh, f uh, twenty lab four f twenty and so um, and I'll say uh, in C just so I kind of reminds me what it is set as main project will be checked by default. And just leave the ISO encoding uh, for the 8859, which is again dash one, which is uh, American English, and finish. And then it's going to create uh, a, 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 a sub subdirectory in your uh, in your uh, in your directory where you store all your programs. It'll create a separate directory for for that. So here it is. It is highlighted, and it should be uh, made our uh, primary file. Sometimes what I'll just go ahead and right click on it and say, um, okay, it says it says unset as main project, which means it is set as the main project. So I'm going to leave that alone. I just like to check that. Now the next step we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and uh, and create the uh, uh, the source file which if you click on source files right now, there's nothing there. So you, you highlight source file and you right click, new, and then main C. Uh, and then we're gonna give it a name. We'll go ahead and call it uh, lab, lab four. And maybe I'll put in F20 as well. Okay, lab four F20 and we'll finish. And here's what we get. So it, it goes ahead and puts me in here. I'll pr probably change that to. Uh, Seven twenty-three, and I'll just go ahead and say this is. Uh, um, blink, with interrupts. Blinks with interrupts and C. Okay. It goes ahead and puts in my include file, but it does not put in my configuration words automatically. So we'll have to set those up like before. And then it creates a little uh, main routine and uh, and then a return from that. So I'm gonna just open that up and we'll, we'll, we'll put some code here in a minute. But first, before I do anything else, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna compile it. I'm gonna click on the compile and make sure that it compiles and it did with no errors, that's fine. And then it's not a bad idea just to go ahead and program it into your chip, um, just, to, just to make sure that, uh, that everything's working, that, that, uh, you, that your SNAP programmer's all set to go, and that everything's uh, properly set up. And we'll see, mine, ha mine may have to, uh, yeah, it, they may have to uh, 
uh, upgrade the firmware. So it does say that updating firmware application. And so uh, I don't think this snap has ever been used to program anything. Uh, so it, it's it's getting updated firmware right now. And uh, and then okay now it's erasing now it's programming and it programmed everything and it's complete. Now of course no, it's not going to execute anything. And uh, uh, what's bad is uh, it might have up might have changed the configuration words. <laughs> I probably should have done those first. Um, we'll see if it works again. All right, so now we're going to do the configuration words next. Uh, so what I just did it was probably not a good idea um, because uh, uh, it's possible that it might have cleared out. Uh, the programmed in configuration information. I hope it didn't do that, but we'll see. But in any event, okay, so here, here are the configuration words. Now you'll notice it's very similar to when you did it in, in assembly, um, but when you we paste them in, you'll see that they are they are different. And it's also the pasting in is gonna include another example of include uh, pound include xc8.h. So we'll have to, so we'll probably just erase this one one time here. Okay, and then, okay, so, First, oscillator. I want the internal oscillator. Uh, and I, you may not be able to see this. Let me let me uh, let me make this. Let me uh, add in the uh, the magnifier. Let's see, ease of use. I'll, I'll pause here. Okay, I'll turn on the magnifier. Now, hopefully, you can see this. Uh, so, oscillator, internal oscillator. Watchdog timer, uh, we're going to turn this off because it will definitely cause problems if we leave it on. Now, we're going to use it when we do the sleep lab, but we don't want it on for now. And in fact, when we do the sleep lab, we're going to choose the setting software uh, uh, um, enable. Uh, it, so, um, but anyway, but right now we're just going off. Power up timer enable off, master clear on. Uh, Code protection off, code protection data off, uh, brown out, you can leave that on, that's fine. Clock out enabled off. We, we turn that on so we could see the clock on the oscilloscope, but we don't normally want to waste that pin. And I think that's, I think that was, I think it comes out on RA2, uh, if I don't remember correctly. But anyway, um, so we'll leave this off for now. We'll, uh, internal, external switch over off since we're not, don't have an external clock. Failsafe clock monitor off since we don't have an external clock. Uh, flash memory self-write protection off. Phase lock loop off. We're not going to use the phase lock loop. Uh, stack overflow reset enable on. That's fine. Doesn't matter really. And uh, brownout uh, voltage doesn't matter, but we'll leave it at low. And low voltage programming on. Okay. So now we just go down here. Uh, generate source code to output. We click that. And here's what we get. And so I'm gonna, and you see we still have an, uh, this XC8 here. We'll, co we'll copy uh, all this and um, copy. And then we'll go up here. I'm gonna turn off the magnifier and I'm gonna paste it in right up here. All right, now hopefully you can see this okay. Um, Notice the uh, format is quite different. The, the syntax here is different than in uh, than in um, assembly language, but that's totally normal. Okay, now just because I'm curious if I screw things up, I'm going to see if I can program it. So we'll we'll compile and program again. Uh, and okay, so it, it did. It was happy. Uh, so it didn't cause any problems the first time. That's good. I wasn't sure about that. Uh, because you have to have low voltage programming on, and if you accidentally turn this off, you'll have to get a, another program or a different one, not the snap, because the snap won't work with this off. The chips are shipped with the low voltage programming configuration bit set to on. Uh, so when you get a brand new chip, you can program with your snap. But if you turn off the bit, you'll have to go get a different programmer and turn the bit back on so you can program it the next time with your snap. So some of you have already learned that the hard way. Uh, it's not a problem. It doesn't really hurt anything, but it might if you're working at home and you don't have another programmer, it will stop you in your tracks. Uh, 
Okay, so now we're gonna, now that the configuration words are done, we're, we'll start with the code. Okay, so let's go back to the data sheet. And I think it's here, yeah. So, uh, so we're going to, uh, so one of the features we're gonna use on this one is we're gonna use, uh, we're gonna use the uh, delay function that's built in. Uh, okay, so they're, they're setting all things up, okay. Um, okay, here's where we are. So we did the configuration bits and they're all set up and their screen should look like that. Okay, so one of the things we want to do, we want to put in this line, pound define underscore XTAL underscore freak 4 million point zero. And that's because we're, we're using a four megahertz clock. Now, if you're using a different clock, see, I don't want that one in there. I just want, uh, just want this. All right, I can't apparently do that. So we'll just copy this and then we'll go back here and we're gonna go ahead and put this in up here. And I'm gonna put in the pound to begin with and then we'll... Now, what, what this does, this creates this constant which, uh, which our C compiler uses to uh, generate these delays. And all it does, it just creates a counting loop just exactly like we had uh, in the first prog in the first program, uh, but it it allows the counting loop to to be exactly constructed so that we can uh, specify microseconds or or milliseconds, uh, and and we can we can write those in and uh, and we know it's going to be pretty close to exactly what we specify. All right, so I'll show you how that works in just a minute. All right, so we'll go back here. So the next thing we'll do uh, is we're going to set up our clock. And remember, we needed OSCON equals 6A. So that's fine. So we'll copy that. And we'll pop that in. So we're actually going to do this in the main routine. And um, so we may start this, put it in there. All right, so that's, that's going to configure the OSCON register uh, to... Uh, to run at four megahertz. Now, notice the number we put in there in that register is exactly the same number we did, we used when we did it in assembly, because uh, assembly or C doesn't really, you know, the hardware doesn't really know the difference. Uh, it's all in the compiler. Uh, the compiler just makes it a little easier because notice we didn't have to bank cell, we didn't have to put, uh, we didn't have to move literal to W and then uh, and then move W to F. We could do it in just one instruction. So that's that's a nice feature. Um, okay, so that's all good. So now we uh, now we have our our uh, and let's see maybe I'll put my whole face back in here. Now we now we have uh, we're, we're going to set up our ports. Now we're going to use uh, we're going to use uh, port A to drive our LEDs. One with uh, pin five and one with pin two the green with pin five and the uh, blue with pin two. Uh, and then we're gonna use uh, port B to, uh, uh, in order to uh, uh, can, uh, read the, the push button input. And we're, for that, we're gonna have to make sure that we turn off our, our analog select bits. Now, it turns out there are no analog select bits for, uh, for RB7. There's not even one for RA5, but there is for RA2. So we should, we probably should have put in here an ANCEL, uh, ANCEL A equals zero as well. As long as we're not using any analog inputs, we could, we could turn off ANCEL A, ANCEL B, and ANCEL C could all be set to zero. And that's not a bad thing to do. Um, uh, because believe me, if you uh, pull your hair out trying to find why you're, why you can't read some device that's coming in on some pin, and it's all because you never cleared the analog select bit, uh, you'll be kicking yourself. It also can cause problems. Um, it's just not a clean way to do it. If you're using that pin as a digital input, you, even if you're using a digital output, you can get by without clearing the ANCEL bit, but it could cause you trouble if you, uh, if you, if you use the port register to write, and 
remembering that it does read modify write, it could misread what's in another pin and change that and write out the wrong thing uh, if you haven't cleared those Ansel bits. So, so you should always clear them unless you definitely are going to use them as an analog input. And by default, they're always set for analog function. They're always set to ones. Okay, so so we'll we'll um, uh, um, I think we'll just go ahead and write this code ourselves. So let's go back to the uh, here here. So and usually what I like to do is I like to put a little comment in, and I like to start the comment back here, and I like to say. Um, So configure clock and port. So we're going to do that. Um, sorry, I used the wrong thing. I was doing assembly language still. In assembly, the semicolon is your comment, but obviously it's double slashes. And I definitely recommend you do double slashes and not the slash star comment star slash. Uh, that can get you into trouble because you can't nest those things. All right, so first we'll do tris a. And we'll say that just equals zero. And then we'll do uh, uh, and uh, we'll do uh, Ansel A. And we'll set that equal to zero as well. And notice how they turn blue. That tells you that it does in fact uh, find those uh, names in the include file. And the interesting thing in, in, in C, you just include xc.h, and then the C compiler knows uh, which, which, uh, uh, which chip you've, you've selected, and so it will go pull the correct include file uh, for you. You don't, you don't have to specify it here, but in, in assembly you do, so it's just a little different. Uh, okay, so, that, so that's going to take care of that, and then since... Uh, since we may want everything to start off, it might not be a bad idea to go ahead and do LATA equals. Now we could just say it, set it equal to FF uh, and make all the bits one, but um, let's just be a little more specific. So we'll do 0B, and what we'll say is we know the first two uh, bits are not implemented. Now we're to 5, that's 7 and 6. So 5, we'll make 5 a 1. And then we'll just put zeros for 4, 3, and then a 1 for 2. And then for uh, 1 and 0, we'll put zeros. Now we could have put a, a hex value in, but I didn't off the top of my head uh, have it. Uh, but I guess it would have been 2, 4. But whatever. Anyway, uh, so there we go. So now that's going to, that's going to, that, what that's going to do is going to, it's going to put ones as the output so that our, our LEDs uh, will be off. And so that's that's going to be good. So that sets up port A. Um, now port B. Uh, so uh, what we'll do for port B is we'll make sure, it, we'll, we'll go ahead and set Tris B. So by default they're all ones already, but we're just going to go ahead and do this anyway. We'll just do zero uh, X uh, and F F the lower four bits aren't even implemented so we really could do F zero doesn't really matter um, but I'll do the F zero and then I'm going to do the Ansel A or Ansel B and uh, here I'm I'm going to go ahead and um, I want I want all the ANSO bits off, so I'm just going to set it equal to zero. Now, uh, just for completeness, uh, we have we have port C. We do have uh, one of the bits in port C, uh, bit six, is connected to the uh, red LED. So, in case we wanted to use that, we might as well go ahead and configure that. But I'll leave it off. So, so I'll go ahead and, and do tris C um, equals uh, zero so we'll make all these outputs and then I'll do uh, Ansel Ansel C equals zero 
Um, I try and keep things somewhat lined up. Uh, and then if I don't do this, the light will probably be on. So I'm just going to go ahead and say LATC um, equals uh, 0x. Uh, so I know it's in position 6. So maybe what I'll do is uh, 0b. Okay, so 7, 6 is a 1. And then I'll just do 0. So that's 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. So that should take care of that. Okay, now we've configured all the pins. Now I went a little overboard here. You could ignore some of these, but sometimes if you do, you, you may find yourself with uh, LEDs turned on that you didn't anticipate being on. So this just makes it nice and, uh, nice and clear cut. Uh, okay. <coughs> all right, so, so with this, now, now we're gonna do, uh, we'll do our loop, okay? So, so we'll set up our infinite while loop. And so you can see this this pretty well puts the infinite while loop down here. And I'm just gonna get rid of this dead space. Oops, I didn't want to do that. Okay. No, uh, yeah, I didn't really want to do that. Okay, that's fine. So we'll leave it like that. Okay, so now I can put in the rest of my program here. Now, uh, that's not entirely true. There's actually another little piece that's going to come up here in a minute. But let's go back to our lab guide. Okay, so we've got this part done. So we've we've done we've configured all of our uh, all of our ports and our clock. All right. So now, what about the loop? Well, we've got our infinite while loop set up. Now, uh, so the challenge is to uh, to use these instructions in the in this bank here, and uh, and turn RA5 on, call the delay, turn it off, call the delay, and that'll basically recreate lab two. So let's let's do that. So um, the good news is that uh, yeah, these are nice and convenient. So we'll just we'll just save them all, and we'll work this out. Um, actually, I guess we're they're kind of redundant. So let's do this. We'll save these two, and then um, okay, let's go back to our code now. So we we'll just put this right here, and uh, we can index it in a little bit or not. Yeah, probably we should. And maybe I'll just skip a space, and then I'll put this in. And what I'm going to do is I'll just do this. And then I'm just going to do this, and now, uh, now we have uh, basically what we need to make this work. But I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and make that zero, which is correct. But I'll need to change this to a one to turn it off. All right, so let's let's see if we can run this, and let's see if that works. So we'll we'll do that and oh I unplug this. Let's see, I guess I can unplug this. Uh -huh. uh, let's see where is my plug. Uh, there we go. Okay, and it looks like it's done, and it looks like it's working, but you can't see it. So let me bring this up, and I'll pop this over here, change my camera. And there we are. And now you can see it, and you can see that it's blinking very nicely. Uh, so that's great. All right, so now... That takes care of that. Now, let's say we wanted to uh, change this to the blue light. 
Well, that's pretty simple to do. Uh, so we'll just, uh, yeah, we'll just, we'll just modify this. We'll change this to two, and we'll change this to two, and now we'll see if we can run it and see what happens. Yeah, so that changes it to the blue light. Now, let's see if we can just go ahead and change it one more time. We'll change it to the uh, we'll change it to the red light. We'll, we'll put in C6. Since we did set this up, uh, this should work just fine. So let's let's do this. Oops, I have to do that one more time. Sorry. Okay. There we go. Now we've got the red light. So, so that would be a good exercise for you to do, just to go through this and make sure you can do all of these things. Um, and uh, again, remember that we, we do have a debugger, uh, and the debugger works in this program as well. So let's, uh, let's well, there's a couple of things that we can do that are actually uh, sort of interesting. Um, one of the things we can do is we can we can actually see what code got de uh, developed. So let's look at let's look and see see about that. So um, so um, let's see. I think we can see. Uh, well, we can definitely see what's what's in the memory. So we but that's this that's the uh, that's the machine code. Let's see. Uh, so I think. Um, Yeah, I think we can do that, uh, but I think we have to. Um, I may have to do this in a later one. It may take a little more setup than I have than I want to take the time to do right now. Yeah, okay, that's fine. I I think if I put it in debug. Um, um, yeah. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I don't think. Okay, well, anyway, that's fine. We'll come back and work with some of this later. Uh, I, I will show you that, but I'm not going to show it to you right now. Um, okay, so now we have uh, that. Uh, let's let's go ahead and assemble this for debug, and I'll, we'll just show you some of the debug features. And actually, we may be able to see the code, too. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean and build project for debugging. And then I'm going to program device uh, for debugging main project. Still working. OK, now it's done. And now we're going to launch the debugger main project, or debug main project. Okay, now it, it is uh, it is programming. It's running, so I'm going to reset it. And when I reset it, we'll go back to the very first instruction right here, uh, which is the load the OSCON. Now, uh, let's see uh, let's see if the if the disassembler views are available now. I think they may be. Uh, we can certainly see it in, but no. Let's see. I want to see uh, debugging. Yeah. So now we can see the disassembly. Okay, so here's here's our disassemble code. Now, one of the things that's a little tricky, note that our variable names are gone. So that's a problem and makes it a little hard to follow. So now you actually have to know what location uh, your, uh, you know, what location things are actually stored in. And notice, uh, and notice, uh, you know, but this is, so this is the, this is how much code's been generated. So uh, notice here, Move a uh, literal to W six alpha, look familiar. Uh, move literal to the BSR one, so put it point us to bank one, and then uh, move W to F, and then it says timer one gate control. The reason why it gives us the wrong uh, register is because it it 
it's uh, it's not smart enough to figure out that uh, uh, that it's actually uh, uh, what bank it's pointing to. Remember, the lower seven bits of the of the variable are stored in 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 the instruction. So and that's what it that's what it has. It, it knows CF, but it doesn't know that it's one CF. And so as a result, um, it it pulls up timer one gate control instead of uh, OSCON. Um, and so there are some problems with this, uh, but. Um, but this is what actually is loaded in the machine. Uh, if we go to the memory view, um, let's see. Let me let me do that. I don't think I don't think I have it here. No, I don't. Oh yeah, I do. So if we go to the data sheet um, and we go to our memory organization and we go down, what you'll see is that the timer one gate control uh, register. Uh, is right here, which is the same as OSCON, but this is the bank zero register. And even though our bank is correctly set to bank one, uh, the disassembler uh, isn't sophisticated enough to take that into consideration. So it gives us the address as though we're still pointed to bank zero. Um, and that's why it does T1 uh, gate control and not OSCON. Anyway, just so you could see that. All right. So this is this is actually the instructions, and uh, it's kind of useful to look at this. Notice also here, uh, this says uh, MOVLB three to port A. So again, if we go back to that same memory view, you'll notice that uh, that port A port A is the is the uh, is is zero C in bank zero, but what it's actually looking for is bank three. That's the AND cell. And so uh, so you do have to sort of be smart when you look at the disassembly listing. You have to realize that it uh, that you have to pay attention to what bank's being set because it's going to tell you ports and it's going to it's going to give you the the name of the variable that it would be pointing to in bank 0 and not the actual variable it's pointing to, which is I don't know, it's not a good thing. Um, but what's nice here is our comments, you'll notice, come through loud and clear. So, so that's our, our, our actual instructions. So this is the C instruction, and this is the comment, and then that's what it takes to implement this instruction. And then this is the next instruction in C, and this is what it takes to implement it in, um, uh, in, in assembler. So just one, it just says clear F port A, which is kind of nice. Uh, and it could do that uh, because I guess the bank was already set to the right, uh, to bank one. So that was, that worked out fine. And then Ancel zero, so it has to set the bank to three and then it can clear that. And you can see, so all of our C instructions are listed here. So that can, that can help you sort of read through this, even though it gets a little confusing. Now, in, the, in our debugger, we can single step through these commands, so we can actually uh, we can actually step in uh, into them. So we can just click, and if we shrink this down just a little bitty bit, uh, we should be able to uh, get our see our see our board here. So so we can just step through it. So now we're going to get down here. Now we're all configured. Now we're in our infinite while loop. So we're going to we're going to clear port C pin six, and that should turn on the red light. There it does, and uh, that's really nice. Now here's our delay. Look at what happened for our delay routine. It created three loops, uh, three embedded loops, and it has it all set up. So uh, in this PC stack common, uh, it's actually taking, it's actually, it's actually using, um, it's creating its own stack, and it's using values off of the stack. Uh, so, and that's where it stores the, uh, that's where it stores the variable, uh, the index variables. So it's kind of interesting. 
So, so some of this is hard to read just because C kind of plays games with it. Um, all right. Well, anyway, uh, so enough of that. You can also follow it in C. And you can see here, when we're in C, uh, we're going to execute. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step over this instruction because I don't want to go through the delay. So that it's, it's, and it takes much longer than it normally would. It's kind of a pain. Um, delays really do uh, play, play havoc with trying to use the debugger. Uh, you can see uh, it's just taking a very long time to get past this delay. So sometimes what I'll do instead is I'll stop it and then I'll, I'll set the cursor to where I want to go and I'll use the run to cursor uh, here. Okay, and that, that tends to work a lot better. Okay, now, now I can single step through this instruction and it should turn this light off. And it does. There we go. And then we'll do the delay and we'll keep doing the loop. So you can see you can use the debugger here uh, which can really help you. Uh, okay, so uh, let's talk just a, a little bit about the, uh, the ISR. And for the ISR, we are going to have to set up uh, the timer zero. So we would have to go back here and add, add in some instructions uh, from, from lab three uh, where, we did the, where we did timer zero. And uh, I don't have those pulled up, so I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to, um, I think I'm maybe going to skip through that. I'm, I'm going to leave that, let you figure that out. But basically, you have to set up timer zero just like you did, only using C instead of assembly. And then the ISR, the ISR is a separate function. And normally, normally we put, uh, you can put the ISR at the beginning of the end, but normally we put it at the beginning. I don't know why, we just do. And, uh, and, so we'll put a uh, void and and we see here in the data sheet uh, how that how that should look uh, and I'll bring that up so it's very similar to the ISR but instead of uh, instead of just putting it at location 4 we tell C that it's an interrupt routine with this construct here void interrupt ISR void now uh, let me just double check this. Sometimes they want an underscore. Okay, how come? Oh, I see. It doesn't well. So let me let's see. Rather than do this, let me uh, go back here. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in that. Um, and we'll call it ISR. That's the name and then void. And then we're going to have a little, little, a few commands. Um, and our last command then uh, will be, uh, I think our last command should be return. Let me just look. Uh, maybe not. Maybe we can just put that in there. Uh, so in the ISR, uh, we we have to do so we have to do the same things we did before uh, in this ISR you're going to have to clear uh, the interrupt flag so uh, now the nice thing is um, the nice thing is in C you can you can actually use the name of that interrupt flag so if we if we go back to our data sheet uh, and we go to timer zero let's see where is timer zero Uh, timer zero. So we want to configure timer zero. I usually go to go up. So um, so we have to do the prescaler and some other things. So we'll do all that. So we're gonna we're gonna have to load up the option register. We can use the same value we used before. So uh, <clears throat> so uh, we can disable all the pull ups. So we can do one. And then the uh, interrupt edge, we don't care about that. So zero, timer zero, uh, zero clocks uh, select. Uh, we want to we want to have a zero there. So one zero zero, and then the timer we want it. We don't want to. We do want to enable interrupt. So a zero a one zero zero zero. So it's going to be eight, and then the PSA. 
um, <clears throat> should be zero. And then the last three bits would be one, one, one. So basically eight, seven. So that's what we do. So we'll put eight, seven in. So let's do that. And it's option underscore register. I'll just copy this. Okay. So then we're going to have to go here um, in our main, set this up. We'll do uh, option register equals uh, 0x87. So that, that configures, uh, configures timer 0, at least partially configures it. We still have a little more to do there. And so we'll go back here. And then we have, uh, so that takes care of this, but then we also need to, um, we also need to, uh, uh, so we don't have to worry about that. We don't have to worry about that. Um, we, 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 uh, yeah, the int con, we do have to worry about that. So let's go to the int con. And then, um, so in the incon, we, we're going to have to turn on our global interrupt enable bit. We're going to have to turn on our peripheral. Uh, no, we don't have to do that. So we'll do one, zero. We have to enable this. So that's a one. So that's going to be uh, one, zero, one, zero. So that's going to be A. And then uh, we're going to clear our, our uh, uh, this, this can be zero. And we're going to clear our interrupt flag so that's zero and zero zero so it's just going to be uh, a zero okay so int con uh, i n t c o n and that's going to be equal to um, zero x a zero Okay, and that, that's going to set us up. And then uh, that should cause us to uh, go into the ISR. Now what we can do in the ISR is we can, uh, we, we first have to clear that, uh, that interrupt flag. Now here's where we can take advantage of C. The, the timer zero interrupt flag is TMR zero IF. We should be able to just use this actual name and most of the time you can. There are some exceptions, so sometimes you're disappointed. But uh, up here in our ISR, we can first check and see, um, you know, uh, so uh, if, um, and we'll put this in. So if it's one, then, uh, then we will, uh, then, then we'll do uh, equal zero. We'll clear it, and else, else we'll reset. I think I think that's legal. Uh, nope. Uh, maybe uh, stop. No, I don't think so. Yeah, it doesn't like that either. Um, let's see. Uh, I thought it was a reset. Well, anyway, uh, what we'll do then is we'll just go into an infinite while loop. Uh, else, um, while one. So we'll just stop. So basically, we'll get stuck here, and we'll know things quit working. So, and then, um, then we're gonna, then we'll toggle. So let's toggle. We'll toggle RA five. So we'll say uh, RA RA five um, exclusive or equals uh, one, and then we'll. Uh, and then we'll, I think that's all we have to do. So, all 
Okay, we'll leave it like that. I think that should be it. Um, all right, let's see if that does the trick. So what we should then see is we should see the red light blink with this one second delay and then the uh, green light blink with that one. So let's, um, we'll compile it. It's happy. And so we'll get this, let's see, where is it? Looks like it's working just fine. So uh, you can see, of course, the, the red light's blinking, uh, the, the, sorry, the green light's blinking at a much faster rate than the red light. The red light's blinking at about a second. Um, so anyway, so that, that should hopefully give you some, um, some good ideas on how this works. Okay, um, let me expand this and I will uh, switch the cameras back. Okay, so um, so so that's that pretty much um, that pretty much covers the lab and and gives you a little bit of an intro. Um, so if you're using if you're using um, the uh, uh, the XE8 2.0, you may have to use uh, slightly different uh, syntax for the uh, for the ISR. Um, I think you have to you proceed. I think you have to proceed interrupt with a uh, uh, two underscores or something like that, uh, and that's one of the things that 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 changed. And it's not a particularly meaningful change, but it is a it can be a little bit of a hassle. So if you're using um, XC8 2.00 or or higher, then you uh, you may that code might not run. Uh, we could actually change that. Uh, maybe I'll play with that and see if that's true, uh, but. Um, and there's a setting you can change in the configuration window that'll let it run. Um, it's, but it's I, that's why I, uh, why I recommended you just stick with 1.45 for the time being. Um, okay, I think that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. Um, yeah, I, I think I'm just gonna. I think we'll quit with this, and um, and then we'll let you do the lab, and then we'll come back uh, next week, and I'll I'll. I'll talk a little bit more about I'll kind of do a series uh, review of C uh, and I think that will be helpful so we'll try and do that uh, and we'll hopefully catch up um, yeah I think that'll be good all right uh, with that we will stop